we are back. Indigo Sage and I are back. We are talking Love During Lockup, season one, episode two. However, before we get into the second episode, I wanted to give a little update on John and Christiana from Love After Lockup. It turns out that, remember on the final episode, John had cut his hair and he hadn't heard from Christiana. It turns out that Christiana and John did get back together, but now they have officially broken up. They have separated and it looks like it ended on a really bad note. Uh, Christiana did make an, a statement on her Facebook that she had fallen off the wagon a couple of times, but she is back on. And I would like to just say that I'm wishing the best for Christiana. I yes, think me too. that she's one of my favorite people from the whole franchise. And I am rooting yeah. for Christiana. I am hoping that she can stay sober and continue yes. to move in a positive direction, whether it's with or without John. Any word, so, any word, may I ask any word on her mom? Nothing. I did not hear or see anything on the social media about her mom as of right now. Wow. Good luck to, to the whole family. Yes. And good luck to John too, because I'm sure, you know, <laughs> this is wife number four or five that uh, he has lost. Um, I think you need to stop, stop marrying buddy. Cause everybody knows I love Christiana, John, not so much. Anyway, we are moving on and listen, this episode has driven me to drink. I'm telling you, these people are a full-on wreck. And we start where we pick up right where we left off with Andy and Harry. Honey, what did you think? Mess. Mess, mess, <laughs> mess. Now, um, I like the mama. I like the mama. I like the mama. And I like what the mom said when she said, well, first of all, you know, it's nothing like your mom to... <laughs> to tell your truth for you or to check you sort of speak because when she asked are you giving him money and she was went to stuttering uh 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 she said you tight on money so i know you know whether or not you gave him money and you know how much you gave him if you gave him some money so you gave him money you know it's it's nothing like a mom to come in and check you spill your tea i am here for yolanda okay yeah, and- i like her mama her mama said listen you know, when it comes to my kids, if a man is involved, I have to P.I. them. She's yes. got to investigate. And my question was, Yolanda, as long as she has been dating him, which I think she said it was like nine or, or eight, eight or nine months, why has he not been P.I. previous yes. to this? Because the first two weeks that she told me that she had fallen in love with this inmate, he would have been investigated. We need to know. I do appreciate that her mom did tell her that if she thinks that she's going to Ohio alone, she could forget it. She's yeah, come, girl. And she's going to find out everything. I said, Yolanda, you are a woman after my heart, ma'am. That's my kind of mama. Okay, I saw, I saw me. So I, I like her bringing her back to reality when she said, why would he ask a woman with two kids for some money? Like, okay. you've got to ask yourself that. You know, I, I agree with her mom. And I do too. And now let me say this. What I really liked is when she asked, okay, what I didn't like when Indy was on the phone with Harry and crying, talking about don't disappoint me. Okay. Then when she was packing to move to Ohio and she kept wanting to get reassurance from him, he said <laughs> something about... I don't know. I'm not sure. Do what feels good to you. Do what's in your heart. When I heard that, I knew that he did not want her coming to Ohio. And this is all just a big game. Because if he really wanted her there, he would have, well, you know what he's not putting off? You putting money on his phone card and you sending him money. He's not putting that off. Sorry, I'm not for it. I'm going to play devil's advocate real quick. Is that his fault that she's not in reality? Because he didn't say, come on down. Oh, he no, didn't say that. that she isn't that she's not living in reality you know he's doing what he does he's doing what criminals do he's and doing what con artists do and that is to be in jail telling you everything that you want to hear over phone and over video chat and when you come to visit so that they can continue to get money so that they can put 
money on their commissary so they can call other women with the phone card that you paid for so they can do whatever it is that they need to do. He is doing his job and she's allowing it and being too simple minded about it. And I'm sorry, that is rude. I am being extremely rude, but that's how I think I, I triggered you. But... He has got to protect herself. Yes. And she's not doing that. Exactly. And, and and I'm just trying to be fair because I don't agree with what he's doing. So I want to say that I don't agree with it, but it's not his fault because he didn't tell her to come, you know, and I know on the flip no, side, her psychic told her she was going and all of a sudden she's going. That just doesn't that ain't no make psychic. sense. Don't you put that. That ain't no psychic. That ain't no spiritual. But that ain't nothing. That ain't that was I don't know what that was. But uh, anyway, moving right. Up. Have they even met? Because I think she hasn't even met him yet right she, they haven't put their hands up to the glass i cannot remember i cannot remember in the um, back of my mind i don't think I don't they have know. i but don't know that's just too much it's too it much. is you know her telling her mom that when things work out with her and harry her mom's gonna owe them an apology i said oh that's a big Girl. deal no <laughs> they looked him up and she said aggravated robbery robbery at gunpoint and kidnapping i said there is nothing sexy about it not no. one thing is attractive about that. Can it happen too? Exactly. I would watch a show. If We TV decided to get a bounty hunter show and, and her and her partner were the people, I would watch I, that. Exactly. I'd watch her. I would. And I'd be like, get them. She looks like a tough cookie, hands on, you know. And I'm like, she had lipstick on and some eye, you know. She, honey, you could be tough and, and still be fabulous and tough. You and know, she's I got loved her it. Lipstick on and her cat eye contacts. Okay, were those contacts? Cute. I didn't know, but I was like, "You go, girl. Cute, cuteness, and tough, like tough her. and cute." I, I'm saying, you. Anyway, my problem with that would be is, what if she does put in her two week notice, pack up all of her stuff, and then get ready to go, and he calls her and says, "Don't come." Ooh. Okay. I hope cameras is rolling. Right. For us, for the entertainment value, Haley and Dalton. All right. Now, listen. All right. Now, we get a chance to meet Haley's six-year-old son, Hendrix. And I just want to say that this little boy is absolutely adorable. I fell in he love is. with this little tiny boy. Okay. And I even adore blue his hair. blue hair. I thought the blue hair was super cute. But my <laughs> problem was, is they had this discussion in front of the little boy. And yes. I wasn't a fan. You know, he did at one point run off to feed popcorn to the ducks. Right. I appreciate her son's uh, father. You know, he says that they are friends now. I guess she was engaged to him, but they broke up about three years ago because mm -hmm. he slept with her best friend of 10 years while her and her son were there in the same house asleep. Now that's grounds for everybody getting hurt. You hear me? <laughs> There's going to be some smoke in the city. You don't sleep with my man and you supposed to be my best friend. And then you slept with my best friend. Both of them deserve to get smacked a couple times. Under anyway. the roof, you know, and then he, mm, I had yeah, to separate no that. Vote. I had to separate that from what he's getting ready to say, you know, like about his right, son. Right. You know, I had to separate that, that I guess you can be an a-hole. Really, you you can be not. I guess you can be an a hole, but then still be good to your kids. Yeah, I know a few of those guys. I know. A few yeah, that's guys why I like said. That, yeah, that they are you can. not the best when it comes to being married, and they're not the best when it comes to being a relationship. Boyfriend, but yeah. they are really good when it comes to being a dad. So I've yeah. seen that. Oh, yeah, but yeah. I, and his concern, he says that their son is really young, and he doesn't want his son going to prison to visit Dalton. He says, you know, Dalton's not his father and he doesn't want his son's earliest memories or hanging out during prison, prison visits with mommy's boyfriend. And I am 100% with him. I don't appreciate that. You should not bring that child down to the jail to visit this dude, period. You know what else was really too much for me? Her buying flowers and setting up a, a, a date night for her and Dalton um, over the phone and then making a big chuck roast with no seasoning on it and calling it a steak. I said, what the hell? That is a chuck roast. That is not a steak. And you didn't put not one nab bit of seasoning on it. That was too much. I like the idea. I wrote it down in my notes. I like the idea. That's all they can do. That's all I can do. So I'm, I, I like the idea and the effort. 
you know, and she said he needed a stable home and all of that. What I did not like, though, was that she made an appointment to talk to his dad without his okay or his knowledge, it seemed like, and he doesn't seem cool with that. I don't like that. And he didn't seem like he knew. He didn't seem like he was cool with it. What do you think about that? Well, first I thought, you're talking already about having a child with him. You're talking about buying a house and then having him live there with you. First of all, you got $80,000 from the settlement. You have already spent way too much money on this dude. And now you're trying to get yourself a house and you should because you work every day and you should want a home for you and your son, but not you and your son and this loser, period. Um, second of all, you keep telling us that you work as a housekeeper. You could have started your own business with the money that yeah. you use to give to this dude. And then it was just so weird that out of the blue, um, I found your father on Facebook and I met yeah. up with him and he absolutely was not okay with that. And I noticed that she told him, right yeah. that's not cool. I, I don't understand what was her purpose. Did you find her purpose somewhere in there with a flashlight? Of I mean, the she's trying to get embedded into his life and she is trying to be embedded into his family. And which better way to be embedded into somebody's family than to get to know their parents? That's creepy. No, that's what's creepy is not her wanting it. What's creepy is her seeking him out and finding him on Facebook and without his knowledge and setting up to meet him. That's creepy. That's I think creepy. That she's going to meet his father and she's going to find out who he really is. And she's going to find out that he is nothing like this sweetheart genius GD taker. No, ma'am. He is a real life criminal. Quit playing. I think that's what she's going to find out. She said he was a genius. Uh-huh, because he passed his GED. All right, so now we move on to Santiba and Tally. And I hope that we're saying that right, because I'm not really sure. They just introduced us to them this episode. What I absolutely love is that she lives in Maine. And I am a crazy person when it comes to lighthouses. And I was oh. so excited to see them on the water in the lighthouse and everything. Yeah. I was just smiling from ear to ear. I was also very proud of her for losing the 92 pounds. Yes. Um, so congratulations for that. But one thing that took me off just a little bit, it threw me off a bit. It said at the bottom of the screen that she was 39. Um, I, I, I don't mean to be rude, but I don't buy it. I mean, there is nothing about that woman that says I am 39. She is given all of, you know, 49 or 50. But I don't mean that to be nasty. I'm just saying. That's my opinion. Uh, please get down in the comments and let me know. Does she look 39? Am I wrong? Something's off. What no, I agree with you. I agree with your assessment. Okay, well, girl, listen, congratulations on the 92 pounds. You rock. Yes. So yes. she says that she met Tally on a prisoner website. Girl, now, what was odd to me is that she said she watched some kind of crime program and found some Girl. lady who met her man on this crime site. So she decided to do the same thing. And I said, I, you know, I love, I watch Discovery <laughs> all the time. And I have never wanted to reach out to an inmate. I don't get it. It's not for love. You know, in the fact that she's, he's at a federal maximum security prison and she tries to say that he's not a bad guy like the other people in there well why is he there man girl I, I heard her say that and i was just like did i just hear her say that he's not, he's in there with the bad people the, the the biggest baddest people but he is not like them huh that was crazy okay so what I liked about the friend was that she reminded her that, hey, when you were in that marriage, you know, you ran through money when you was married and, you know, and y'all got a divorce. Right. So it's one thing to, to just tell someone, hey, don't give them money. But it's another thing to be able to back it up. So I was glad that the friend could back it up. And then I was concerned that she admitted that they had they hadn't met. Yeah. She Why says would you they only think couple of pictures of each other but they have never met and they do all of their communication over the phone it's and emotional the fact that he's been able to sweet talk her out of two thousand dollars over the last nine months 
That's and I said, it. you know what? No, ma'am, you are not getting two thousand dollars for giving me a couple of compliments and calling me back. Okay. Period. I ain't even gonna say what I wrote because I, I what wrote it. What you will get from me is a thank you. Thank you, sir. That was I was that was sad that you know because she, he gives her compliments, girl. She can go on any dating site and get compliments. Any. It doesn't have to be. So we're moving on to Ty and Hottie. Now, honey, listen. Honey, listen. I wrote so much down. I was on 180 freaking thousand. 180 freaking thousand. This woman is studying to be a mortician. She is standing over somebody's dead body. I don't know if they are embalming or if they're about to put this woman's makeup on. I have no idea what is going on. It sounded like it was an embalming situation and her phone is ringing off the hook and they are talking and cussing and everything over somebody's grandma. I thought that was disgusting. Um, first of all, I can't understand why WeTV is all right with filming at a funeral home, number one. Number two, what you want them to do? as far as I'm concerned, if you do have your cell phone in that room, in that room, it should be on vibrate and you should only answer it if it's an emergency involving your children or another family member, not answering it because it's your prison vision board hotline situation. And, and here's the thing. I noticed the boss had said you're sanitized. Um, so the phone actually shouldn't even be in there. Once you sanitize yourself, the phone is one of our, our, our smartphones, even though we love them, they're one of the most contaminated Absolutely. things that we can pick up, okay? She said that she has multiple, you know, inmates and they're like, uh -huh. it's like date, dating inmates is like dating Mr. Potato Head, you know? She just switch them out. And then, and then she followed that up with, girl, she followed up with said, I hope he ain't trying to play me. <laughs> Now, wait a minute. I was like, wait a minute. I'm like, Ty, you too much. You tie too much. <laughs> you are embarrassing the hell out of your kids. They have True. to go to school. And somebody's True. parent that they live with is, you know, somebody's parent of one of the kids at the school, they watch Love After Lockup and Love During Lockup. Yeah. And not only that, somebody is going to recognize that funeral home. That's and what that I'm talking about. Because her kids... Her kids, I'm sure they already know. She said, can your daddy take you to the soccer practice or the soccer game? So her kids are used to that. I'm sure before this television show, they was probably getting maybe a little slack from their mama's behavior. But the funeral home, I wish, it's, it's that I wish time. <laughs> I wish a person would. In my opinion, if she was a boss lady. Like she said at the beginning that she was training under him. So yes. she's not a full-fledged mortician yet. Like, this is not her funeral home. So you cannot act like this. You need Absolutely to go not. and get yourself together. I don't understand why she said, I hope he's not playing me. Is it because she's putting money on his books? Well, I'm changing up my... Yes, she is, because it, it was on one of those vision, the, the progress oh, board you did or whatever say that, that, was. that, that But he doesn't have a clue that she got all these other dudes. And even if he knew, he probably wouldn't care. Um, she really does need some emotional help. Uh, mental health would help a lot with her. Yeah. <laughs> then we move to Max and Tara. And I have a question for you. Last week, you said you felt sorry for Max. Do you still feel sorry for Max? Because I said no. Okay. I am so upset with Max right now. I looked at that. I rewound him a couple of times. I couldn't shake my head hard enough. My neck hurt, okay? I said, Max, God damn you, Max. Okay, I don't know what happened. He bamboozled me. I know he did not bamboozle you <laughs> at all. Not at all. Maybe one day I'll learn, but I thought he was sweet. He made it seem like he was brokenhearted. And I was just feeling so down wow. for him. And this episode, he got a yeah. whole woman cooking pasta looking dry. And in the bed and with a big booty on the on the um screen, and he said we enjoy each other right now. Sleeping. I was just so now listen. I knew from the first episode that this dude was thirsty for fame because he was all about his body, taking all those pictures. I'm a model, I'm a this, I'm a that. 
you know, we find out about Eliza or Eliza, Girl, whatever. Girl, Eliza. She lives at the house and she is all into him. You know, they have an OnlyFans. And I came across uh, a YouTuber who I like to watch because she does all the gossip, like what happens on their social media and stuff. And you're going to deliver some months? Do the reviews and everything. And she went ahead and took one for the team and signed up for his OnlyFans. His OnlyFans is absolutely disgusting. Um, him and that girl and other people have a lot going on. And I mean, the sex. All over that you OnlyFans can have sex page. Only the OnlyFans, okay? It's, it's sex, sex sex? Sex um, oh. If you can see it, if you pay $10 a month for his OnlyFans or pay one $10 fee and then cancel later, but that'll never happen for my, myself. Oh, I won't be doing that. that. Um, he's also some sort of escort. Um, yeah, he's quite nasty Next. and he's all about trying to become famous. And it turns out, remember on the first episode, it looks like Tara did not, um, show up for their yeah. video call. She said that she absolutely did show up for the video call, but they could not connect because him and we TV had not signed up with the prison in enough time oh. to get permission to do video chats. She also said, I seen her do an interview yesterday with a YouTube channel called According to Amber. Honey, listen, oh. if you really like just the behind the scenes gossip about this show, mm -hmm. According to Amber, she's got it all. She did an interview with Tara. I've seen her before. And Tara said that her and him were not boyfriend and girlfriend. They were not dating. She said that he is really thirsty for fame. And after talking just to dropping her, like, this bomb on me, like, you just after like, talking to her <laughs> once or twice, he asked her to be on the show because he was really trying to get his uh, OnlyFans and TikTok to blow up because he's been trying to, you know, do this OnlyFans and TikTok for a Man. long time, you know, completely blown up. So this dude is on here just for the fame. He played she said me. She's in her 30s and he's in his 20s and she would never date him. She said, I wouldn't date somebody who's in their 20s. He's 24 years old. She turns out to be a lovely woman. She's got her head on straight. She said she never took one dime from him. She never asked him for any money. And she said that with his situation, she didn't think that he had anybody that he could send her anyway. So, you know, um, I don't feel sorry for him. Never did, never will. And I, I really don't need him on this show. It seems that he's got that girlfriend or he's got that roommate that wants to be his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And the only reason why he is not her girlfriend, even though they share a bed, they have the sex, they promote their <laughs> only fans together. I don't understand. He only did this so he could be on this show. And I don't hey. think he should be rewarded for that. Horrible. Hmm. I then you just busted any piece of bubble I had. It is gone. Yep. Thank you for that. I have Tara to take all that say, in. I was very upset. I was bothered. I was very she bothered. Also said on the interview that they tried to come to the prison to film her getting out with him. Um, and she told them no, because she had already had plans to have her two children and her family pick her up from jail. And okay. she said, no, I'm not his girlfriend. She said, I want my kids. And so okay. she told them absolutely not. So I don't think that we're going to get a lot of Tara. We might get one episode with her maybe over the phone or something, but we're not going to get a lot of her because it wasn't a real thing. He was just allegedly using her, you know, to get on the show. And, and they're so gonna all edit. of this is alleged because I wasn't there. I'm just regurgitating what Tara said and what I saw regarding his OnlyFans. But in my opinion, I thought that before I even saw it. As soon as I saw the episode, I said, this dude is only on here for TV because if you have a Dang. beautiful roommate like this who really wants to be with you, why are you trolling prison websites? Well, I, I, I okay, wait a minute now. We didn't find out about Alyssa until the second episode. That's what I'm saying. At the beginning oh, of that oh, episode, okay, okay, I saw okay, her, okay. I said, why would you be trolling? If you've got this beautiful girl living here who wants to be your girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, that didn't make any sense. I actually respect her for saying, you know, coming out and saying, now here's what it really is. You know what I'm saying? It's this, it's that. And I respect her for saying, because I'm sure they probably was going to 
probably pay her to allow them to film all of this or whatever. And she said, no, my children come first. So right. kudos to her. She ain't even on my scale. Yeah. I, I love that. She's, I, love I liked her. I loved her in that interview. I think she's a good person who has made some mistakes in the past, but she is trying to clean up her life. And that is something and that's that evident. Be- yeah. So I, I like her and I do hope that we get her a little bit on the show just so we can see her a little more. Yeah. Um, but moving on to Girl. Gabby. Now, honey, listen. You know, Gabby starts out this episode. She wants to go pick her mom up to go dress shopping, but she's got this attitude because Chris is in solitary confinement, the shoe. And my first thought about that was, um, is he really in solitary confinement or is it possible later on we're going to find out that he just doesn't want her getting any more money? I mean, I thought that, but I also wanted to say that in this episode, the way that she was cussing while she was talking to her mom, her mom. and then when she told her mom to kiss her ass, there is nothing and no one in this world that could get me to say that to my mom, ever. And had I ever said that to my mom, I would definitely have, you have a face now. No. I would have woke up in traction the next week, okay? Because my mom does not play. You are not going to tell her to kiss your ass and think that you are about to walk away. Okay. That is a no-go. And especially when she's out digging in the, in the flower bed, whatever tool she was using. It's about to be upside your head. I think that she is a tacky little girl. Well, you know what? Speaking of that, I'm going to tell you something. Th- that was one moment where I kind of was like, is she doing this up for the cameras? Probably. I was just, for just, just a moment, I was like, is she doing this up for the cameras? And then they switched to her mom's face. Her mom looked sincere. You know, her mom didn't like she was acting. But I'm like, is, is Gabby doing it up for the cameras? Because I'm like, do you really talk to your mama like that? Like, her mom looked as if she's used to her speaking to her that way. Dang. And I now, why didn't her mom tell her, you don't have to catch an Uber? She caught an Uber there to pick up her mom, which it was weird already that you're catching an Uber when you have a BMW. And I know she said, because we're going in the city, I don't understand why you have to catch an Uber because you're going in the city, but you have a BMW. Because she took her, her, uh, her beer budget ass over to that fancy dancy bridal shop in that Girl. first she tried on that they said was $15,000. She could have got that unattractive damn dress over at David's bridal on the $99 sale. And then when she came back it with that $30,000 dress, I said, hold the hell up. That dress does not look as if it was worth $30,000. And then she's <laughs> trying to show off in front of her friends. Oh, I'll just get this one to party in. Girl, and this that was- one to get married in. All I need is $30,000. The total of both of those dresses are $45,000. You have already told us that he has given you $60,000. Lady, he only received $150,000. How much? Do you think you're going to be able to buy? And not only that, we found out that if you get that venue, that's another almost $19,000. Girl. Somebody, what calculator is she using? It was a setup by Todd to come to us with the BS. When she was in there showing out in front of her friends and stuff, first of all, just the, the their expressions, oh, the looks on their face had me cracking up. I was laughing so hard. The star of this show this episode was the attorney, honey. <laughs> said, yes, Girl, the I way like she to, spoke to that uh, man no. was so disrespectful. The way she spoke well, to him. And then she, she, I mean, that man could lose his license giving you this man's money. He has to have him sign for this. I'm not just going to give you $30,000 without asking my client. He's the star because he remained calm the entire time. And of course, we know that couldn't have been you and it couldn't have been me. He remained calm. I was like, you, you come through attorney. Like he, he ain't an attorney for nothing. He, he said, I would like to do that for you. <laughs> However, I cannot. I understand what you're saying. However, right. I need his signature for a release. Yes, I know. I understand. However, I was like, this, I need to take notes said, on I that. 
signature before this can be released and her voice got all raised talking about i yeah. don't mean to be rude but as soon as she got to the butt i would have said click you are not my client he is okay but everyone in this episode who was not uh, in this scene who was not gabby deserves you know some recognition because their patience was tested the woman in the store watching get first of all the time she spent helping her to get nothing that's irritating then to watch her fuss about it rip that tiara off throw it on the ground that tiara didn't do nothing uh -uh. And then she stomped away in the gown. I would have you know? made her pay for that tiara. I would have told her, you're going to need to pay for this. I don't know where you're going to get the money. And free. Okay. So you're going to pay for this. I was like, you are so disrespectful throughout this, in your entire scene. Disrespectful to, to your mom. Disrespectful to the attorney. Disrespectful to the store. And, and gassing and up your friends with all these lies. Yeah, I think he needs to cut the money off and see if she sticks Definitely. around because to me yeah. it just seems as if she is all about this big wedding this big diamond this money yeah. but what happens when he gets out and you have no money and he has no money and they repo the bmw and all that other stuff i, I don't know peeps and sages get down in the comments and let us know what you think i think this season is going to be absolutely entertaining i am here for it and I did see the previews for the new uh, Love After Lockup uh, coming in March. And that looks as if that is also going to be entertaining because we have new couples. Now, what I'm waiting for is the Life After Lockup next season because Dante is going to be on there with Lindsay. And Lord have mercy, we know she's about to play him for an idiot. Which I is just not saw hard. a clip of Lindsay, you know, when she was in that man's office throwing stuff and everything. I said... <sighs> And Deontay, I'm assuming Deontay saw that too. Yes. And he wants that? Yes. He says that his mama is not talking to him right now. And I can understand okay. that. She's sick of the mess. Anyway, you guys, like we said, get down in the comments. Let us know what you think. And until next time, bye. Bye.